Jasmine Karemi Kivuti, born on 2nd July 1995, was described by her family and friends as a God-fearing, obedient, respectful, loving, and joyful young woman. In addition to her positive qualities, she was ambitious and pursued various academic courses in school. On her social media profiles, Jasmine identified herself as a hairdresser who enjoyed dancing and having fun. This vibrant and lively side of her personality was reflected in the numerous videos she shared on TikTok as seen here. It was Jocelyn's commendable qualities that led her to secure a position as a secretary at the St. Mary's Catholic Women Association Center in Karagana, Embu County. This center was operated by the Catholic Diocese of Embu. Tragically, just seven days into her new job, on Wednesday, 28th June 2023, Jocelyn had lunch with her mother and returned to work. Little did her mother know that this would be the last time she would see her daughter alive. Welcome to Silent Shadows. As always, if you appreciate our true crime storytelling, support our bi weekly series by liking and subscribing. Together, we uncover compelling tales of crimes and mysteries in Kenya and beyond, presenting well balanced narratives that respect the victims and their loved ones. On Wednesday, 28th June 2023, Jocelyn Kivuti did not return home in the evening after work, raising concerns among her family. On Thursday, 29th June 2023, her family attempted to contact her, but her phone was switched off, deepening their worry. The Catholic priest at the Catholic Women Association Center, where Jocelyn worked, contacted her family, revealing that she had not shown up for work and her whereabouts were unknown. Josephine's father, Simon Kivuti, hurried to the center and confirmed that his daughter was missing. Desperate to find her, the family initiated a search, announcing her disappearance in churches and on social media, but no information about her surfaced. Two days later, on Saturday 31st June 2023, Simon reported Josephine's disappearance to the Runyanges police station in Embu. The police assured him that they would investigate the matter, Upon further investigations and leveraging Josephine's phone data from Safaricom, the police traced Josephine's phone, which was in the hands of one Bonface, Yakulula. Bonface was a 20-year-old school dropout from Vihiga, employed at the Catholic Center in 2022 to clear bushes and take care of the dairy cows, among other menial tasks at the center. On that July 2023, just two days before Josephine's 28th birthday, Bonface eventually disclosed to the police that he knew where Josephine was. He then led the police to a disused pit latrine at the Catholic Center where they made a shocking discovery, Josephine's lifeless body. Her body was then taken to the Embu Referral Hospital mortuary for an autopsy. The government pathologist determined that Josephine had injuries resulting from a violent attack of intimate nature and had succumbed to injuries resulting from strangulation. The police uncovered that Bonface's motive for this evil act was to commit a violent assault of an intimate nature on Josephine. After physically assaulting Josephine, he took her life to conceal his crime, exploiting the fact that she was alone at the center during the attack. Josephine was laid to rest in a solemn funeral on 11th July 2023 at Mbukori village in Embu County. The funeral served as a deeply emotional gathering for her friends, family, and the community mourning the tragic loss of Josephine Karimi Kivuti, as seen here.
At the funeral, her life was celebrated. It also became a platform for addressing the broader issue of violence against women in Kenya, particularly in the workplace. Speakers passionately expressed grief and outrage, calling for justice and systemic changes to ensure the safety of women in the country. The clergy, community leaders, and women's rights advocates emphasized the need for accountability and pledged to stand against GBV in Kenya. The eulogy conveyed the message that Josephine's untimely death should prompt societal change, leading to a re-examination of existing structures that contribute to the vulnerability of women in Kenya. Calls for increased awareness, education, and advocacy resonated throughout the ceremony, with a commitment to creating safer and more respectful environments for all. The case against Bonfesi Akulula is still ongoing and we shall keep you updated on its progress. We send Justin Karemi's family and friends our heartfelt condolences and may her soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you for joining us today and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates on the case. Until then, take care, stay safe and always trust your gut.